What is going on Diablo 2 fans? My name is Debrunsky and today I'm bringing you another Diablo 2 character build video but we're going to switch gears up a little bit and we're going to focus on more of a budget based character. I have made previous uh, budget build videos in the past and they seem to be a pretty big hit so I thought we would go with a budget zealer today. Uh, now I'm going to break down everything, the character attributes, the skill tree, gear and then we'll go through some gameplay to show you guys the character in action but uh, time stamps for the video will be in the description below so if you want to bounce around just check out the gear and the run uh, feel free to use those but anyways guys hope you enjoy the video uh, let's jump in <laughs> So guys, before I jump into this video, there's just a few uh, discussion points and kind of disclaimers that I want to go over. Uh, the first being that this is a budget-based character, so what everybody defines as budget, I mean, it's it's a loosely defined term. I mean, a lot of people kind of get upset and they don't think that what I'm using is budget, or they might think it's, you know, I could go with better gear that uh, I'm running to budget. So really, guys, it's kind of depending on the spectrum of what you consider to be budget so i just went with something that i thought was two to elaborate on the idea of being budget i didn't want to use anything that was higher than an istrune uh so like no cta nothing like that uh no torch no any and then no crazy uh like ethereal weapons so not like an eth reaper's toll or like an eth base uh on my zealer to make oath i wanted to go with a uh, gear that was uh, very budget so kind of stuff that you could ask for free on battle night like crap that people would just drop on the ground so you could actually make a legitimate uh, powerful character and then the final point is that i'm not actually saying that this is the best gear possible or the best budget character even though he does hold his own i'm sure there's different ways you can improve the gear and i will actually discuss that uh, when i break down the gear more specifically but i do think it is a pretty viable uh, character especially for considering the constraints that i'm putting on it and what i'm defining as a budget character but if you guys think that uh, I could improve or you'd want to switch the gear around please uh, feel free to let me know in the comment section below but now we'll take a look at the attributes the distribution of the attribute points uh, varies a little bit from your typical uh, max Vita build and that's mainly just because of holy shield and I'll kind of discuss that a little bit more in a bit but uh, it's enough strength points to wear your gear I don't have any extra points uh, with this character build uh, his gear the highest strength requirement is actually 115 to wear everything but the then uh, the helmet actually gives an additional uh, strength bonus. So that's why you see 130. I only actually need 115 with this build, but I don't feel like strength bugging the characters. So that is the strength investment that I have. As far as dexterity, uh, enough to get max block. And like I just previously mentioned, uh, Holy Shield is an amazing skill. Makes it very easy to get max block on a paladin. So any paladin character that you're running, uh, you know, Hammered in, Zealer, whatever, I do think or do recommend that you go for max block so 145 dex points with holy shield gives me that 75 percent chance to block and then i tucked my remaining points into vitality which was a total of 325 giving my budget zealer almost 1200 health now that doesn't seem like a lot like i don't have cta but uh, with the leeching that he gets back with zeal it's actually does okay on players one hell difficulty but yeah that pretty much wraps up the uh, attribute distribution so now we'll break down the three different uh, paladin skill trees. First skill tree to cover is the offensive auras and it's very simple. It's just four skill points and three of them are just single hard points, uh, prerequisite skills to unlock your final aura. Basically one hard point into might, one hard point of blessed aim, uh, one hard point of concentration. Again, and these are all just to unlock fanaticism. And then I completely maxed fanaticism. So at level 20, gives my party damage a 186% damage increase. Uh, my damage, 373%. Uh, increases attack speed by 35% and attack rating by 135%. Uh, it's an amazing skill. And I mean, the bread and butter skill, the three bread and butter skills for Zealer are fanaticism 
athleticism, zeal, and holy shield. Uh, so yeah, you can't really go without this aura unless you're running some kind of uh, niche uh, holy freeze uh, zealot uh, character. But yeah, this one's just a straight up fanaticism. So that basically covers offensive aura. So now we'll dive into the combat skill tree. There's a little bit more skill investment in the combat skill tree, but I'll break it down how I kind of uh, vested my points. Uh, so I have one hard point in a smite, one hard point in a holy bolt, uh, one into charge. Now uh, just a quick note about charge. Uh, it's a really nice skill to use to kind of get around faster because uh, obviously I don't have Enigma on this character. So on switch, I like to charge. Uh, just I'll show you in action, but it's just a cool way to travel uh, distances quicker uh, without Enigma on a paladin. Then I have one hard point into bust hammer and that's all just to unlock holy shield and then i maxed uh, 20 points into holy shield uh, this skill is amazing a uh, huge defense bonus uh increased percent chance of blocking and it has a 505 second duration so it lasts a very long time and then after i uh, maxed holy shield i put 20 points into zeal again zeal it's a zealer uh, zeal is the number one attack uh, more points more damage so i maxed it out 200 percent attack rating bonus 300 percent damage and five hits for only two cost uh per swing so it's uh very it's not very mana intensive so with a one small source of mana leech uh you're never gonna have a problem with mana on a zealer and then i have uh 17 hard points into sacrifice and i'll kind of explain why i only have 17 uh, when we look at the defensive auras and how i distributed my points there but i uh, basically i put my remaining points into sacrifice and that's just because sacrifice is any synergy to zeal uh, i get 12 percent damage uh, per level so it depends on how you want to invest your skill points because uh you get more damage per sacrifice point than you do uh per zeal point i believe zeal is a six percent damage increase per level and you get 12 percent from sacrifice but every point that you put into zeal you're also getting an attack rating bonus so it's up to you how you wanted to distribute your points you can you can put your remaining points into zeal and then uh, have sacrifice maxed first or vice versa it really just depends on how you want to build your character but i did want to uh, point that out for you guys and then the last skill tree to take a look at is the defensive war skill tree and it's very very simple because I only have uh, one skill point used here and that's 20 hard points into defiance and that's purely because defiance gives a defense per level percent bonus to holy shield so you get an astronomically high amount of defense from that synergy point so that's why i uh, tucked my remaining 20 points into defiance but that basically wraps up all three of the paladin skill trees so now we'll dive into the gear i'll break it down then the mercs gear then we'll do a sample run in chaos sanctuary so as far as your gear goes guys like i said at the beginning of the video this is just what i kind of pieced together for a budget zealer there's so many different combinations of gear is this the best gear no could it probably be improved uh, yes, but I'll kind of break down these individual pieces and why I chose them I'm not going to talk about every single different combination of gear because I'm gonna have a 45 minute video Just going over the gear alone. So with that being said, we'll take a look at what I'm running so We'll start off with the gloves. I'm using uh, Laying of hands now. These are very budget gloves. They're easy to find but they are amazing I have 20% increase attack speed 50% fire resistance, but the big biggest aspect of these gloves and why I'm using them is for the 350% damage to demons. I mean that is just insane. Huge damage output to demons. Laying of hands are probably the best in slot choice for even a godly zealer build so that's why I went with them. Uh, as far as the weapon goes I'm looking at you Ubio. I'm using an upped butcher's pupil this one is actually one percent off of perfect it's 199 percent enhanced damage it rolls to 200 percent so why did i go with this weapon um well i thought it was kind of cool it's indestructible that's 
not really a huge uh, benefit but has increased attack speed deadly strike and open wounds so i thought it was a really good weapon and it does have a decent amount of damage for a single-handed weapon so that's why i went with it and then i paired uh, butcher's pupil with the rumored duress uh, i love this body armor shale um thull super budget faster hit recovery crushing blow open wounds uh, all four resistances just a great body armor to pair with uh butcher's people i mean i'm just stacking a lot of open wounds there uh, as far as the belt goes i'm using string of ears again this is probably the best in slot choice for a godly zealer as well as a budget uh, it's not too hard of an item to find uh eight percent life stolen per hit and 15 percent damage reduction so it is an amazing uh belt to use on any melee character but that's what i went with as far as the ring combo goes i'm using a raven frost now this is a pretty good roll raven frost it's 220 to attack rating and 20 dex maybe if budget you'd use a little bit less of a roll but you get the idea raven frost attack rating dexterity and mainly for the cannot be frozen that is essential for a melee character so that's why i'm using raven frost and then i'm pairing that with a six percent mana stolen per hit a little bit of lightning res a little bit of fire res a uh, rare ring with a little bit of minimum damage and attack rating um i mean i could have paired it with a manald but uh, this is just a random uh rare ring with a little bit of mana leech the main reason why i'm using it is for the mana stolen per hit because i need some source of mana leech so that is the rare ring choice that i went with as far as boots uh gore riders i mean we're just stacking open wounds crushing blow and deadly strike i mean when you combine that with the crushing blow and open wounds on duress and then the deadly strike and open wounds on the weapon you get the idea here i'm stacking uh, different sources of crushing blow and deadly strike uh, just to increase the damage output on this character now the shield is a little bit interesting um i didn't want to go with something like haas i felt like haas was uh, a little bit um beyond budget i mean it can be kind of a difficult uh shield to find so i decided to go with sanctuary and a royal shield now this royal shield did have a decent amount of resistance on it when i initially found it i thought this sanctuary would be a really cool uh, shield to complement this budget build i mean it's got faster hit recovery faster block rate increased block chance defense versus missiles 20 dex but uh, the big whopping key point here is 103 to all resistances it can actually roll more than that i think it rolls 40 to 70 uh stacked on top of the resistances that's on a paladin shield base but uh, just an amazing shield all kinds of res and it really helps cap my res at 75 for all of them well except for lightning on this build but it helps make up for the lack of a torch and annie on this character now for the helmet i'm using a g face it's not socketed same idea with the butcher's pupil uh, i'm not using any sockets on this character but again fast hit recovery and then we're just stacking crushing blow and deadly strike which really helps the output of damage on this character now the last uh piece of gear is the amulet now this is going to be a little bit controversial uh, and it's because i couldn't find a specific weapon for my mercenary i really wanted to use reaper's tool a non-eth reapers but uh, i threw it away and i couldn't find it when i found my ethereal version and an eth reaper's tool is way too godly for a build like this so i decided to rock a atma scarab this might be kind of a harder amulet to find so that's kind of that uh you know if you guys think it's budget or not but i thought it's a cool amulet i get a bonus to attack rating uh poison res which poison res isn't that important but i get five percent chance to cast level two amplified damage on striking it's not as reliable as the decrepify curse proc from a reaper's tool merc which is what i initially wanted to use but uh when this curse goes off and it reduces enemies uh, physical resistances by 100% you know puts clear speed through the roof you're basically one-shotting enemies on players one so it's not the most reliable uh, source of increasing damage or source of curse but uh, I just went with it to use something different you know I could have used high lords but then I'm kind of blurring the line where I kind of think high lords isn't an appropriate uh, amulet for a budget character but uh, yeah that basically covers the gear I have nothing on switch and nothing on my 
inventory so you could stack stuff like you know faster run walk charms uh cold damage charms for increasing the duration of a monster's cold length or you know max damage charms but i didn't think max damage was budget so i just left the inventory bare but now we'll take a look at my mercs gear now so i just kind of threw this gear together uh, quickly for the merc setup i do really wish i had a reaper's tool like i mentioned it would have been amazing for this build like i said i couldn't find a non-eth version anywhere in my stash so this kind of went with uh, something else that i thought would be good and then i also wanted to point out that i don't think ethereal weapon bases is budget so obviously like obedience and an ethereal thresher would be amazing for a budget character but i think finding that f thresher is it's kind of blurring the lines again between what is budget and what's not budget so i went with all non f weapons for the setup um so body armor i went with what i think is the number one budget uh, mercenary armor in the game and that's treachery the 45 increase attack speed is huge when you combine that with the fanaticism it helps this mercenary reach an insane attack speed breakpoint uh, it also has fast rate recovery, a little bit of cold res, and a uh, chance to proc venom on striking, and then fade when struck. Fade when struck gives him uh, a lot of DR and resistances. Now with this setup, he actually doesn't need the fade proc for res, but uh, the damage reduction is really nice. Now I paired this setup with uh, a Talrash's mask. Now in my opinion, Talrash's mask is the number one budget mercenary helmet in the game, as uh, life stolen per hit, defense, uh, life, and 15 all res. The cool thing about the all res from the Talrash's mask is it basically helps cap out the Merc's resistances before fade, so you don't have to rely on that fade proc for your Merc to not die from elemental damage because uh, he already has capped res. And then wrapping everything up, I went with a non-eth bone hue and then I put two am runes in it. Uh, now, like I said, Reaper's Toll would have been amazing, a non-eth one, but uh, the cool thing about this setup with the 30 increase attack attack speed on it plus the treachery increase attack speed and the fanaticism aura from my paladin uh this mercenary setup he hits the absolute fastest attack speed breakpoint possible and then so he does a decent amount of damage he hits pretty hard uh and then i also put two amruns in it and that just gives him a total of 14 life stolen per hit then when you combine that with talrash's mask he has almost 25 percent life stolen per hit so it's really good for keeping him alive uh when you don't have a cta to buff his health and then the last point that i should note about this mercenary is that it is an act two nightmare offensive mercenary and that's just to get the might aura to couple it with uh, the fanaticism aura on my zealer paladin to just really up his damage and my damage uh, in total. So I'm going to do a players one difficulty chaos sanctuary run. I'm going to clear some monsters. I'm not gonna clear everything, but uh, we'll do all the seal bosses and then we'll finish up with Diablo. Try and do a relatively smooth run and show you guys uh, this character. Players one difficulty. Fuck the holy shield. This is what I was talking about earlier, using charge on switch to get around a little bit quicker. Hopefully I can uh, skip the majority of these, try and get to Chaos Sanctuary pretty quickly. I kill some here. Now, one of the kind of bummers is I really do think Reaper's Tool would significantly increase the clear speed on this character. Uh, the crap is just awesome. The Amplified Damage proc from Amos Scarab, it's not, it doesn't proc as frequently as you would think. Like, here's a really good example, immune to physical. Okay, I guess it proc there pretty quickly, but... Reaper's Toll would be a good way of dealing with physical immunes with this character, but since I don't have it, uh, Amascarab is probably the next best thing for uh, handling uh, physical immunes. I don't really know what else you, what else you could um, use. Vengeance, I guess. I don't think it would be as quick as Reaper's Toll, though. Or uh, Amascarab. by these guys stuck here so I mean I would say for 1200 health no CTA buffs no torch no Annie 
Uh, I think that this character is... I mean, I think he holds his own. A uh, bunch of champions here. I'm so used to having Enigma and constantly relying on uh, that to reposition the mercenary that it's kind of it's a little bit different to uh, always waiting for uh, my mercenary straggling around, but... The uh, Bone Spear procs on Bone Hue, uh, pretty good style point wise. Definitely not as good as Reaper's Tool. Ooh, that's a lot of fire damage taken there. Okay. I can try and get them separated. Jeez. Okay, so a couple close calls there, but uh, take the gauntlets, jewel. I mean, I don't think you can really not expect to have some close calls with pretty, pretty budget setup. One of those busy chaos sanctuaries. Amplified damage uh, definitely proc better from out scarab, so that was huge. Uh, you definitely notice a huge increase in clear speed there. Everything was just dying instantly. It's just not reliable. Like Reaper's Tool, again, I know I said it, but it would have been such a good addition. We're definitely making our way though, slowly. Couple close calls, but... Now hopefully this bad boy Desace goes okay. Oops. Got amp damage on. Go back to town, get that off of us. We don't want to die here. Hey. Thank God for charge on the uh, paladin. Poor man's enigma. Well, I guess it's the poor, poor man's enigma. Nadja's staff is the poor man's enigma, and then charge is the poor, poor man's enigma. We got some fireworks going with the bone spear procs, holy bolts from uh, laying of hands, some decent style points. As long as this character doesn't get completely over overwhelmed, and he can kind of work away and chop away at stuff, not get swarmed, uh, it's pretty good survivability. We'll use a little rejuve. Okay. I got flatlined. Kind of expected that. And there we go. A rare sash. Nothing else too much. But that's your chaos. 
run with your budget zealer well guys there you have it that is my budget zealer paladin character build in the book so really hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, let me know in the comment section below what character you'd like to see next in this series uh, the most frequently asked for a character build in the comment section of this video will be my next budget character build for you guys so let me know what you want to see uh, other than that, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you could throw a like on it uh, and share it uh, and even consider subscribing if you're new to my Diablo 2 YouTube channel. Post new weekly content and stream every week. So there's always new stuff to look forward to on this Diablo 2 YouTube channel. So make sure you guys subscribe. Other than that, hope you guys have a great one and I'll see you on my next stream or Diablo 2 video. Peace out.